Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Workboat Haven. Welcome to part five of the all weather ship build. In this part, we're going to finish working on the shaft tube installation. We're going to install universal couplings and we're going to cut our shafts to length. We'll do an overview of the electronics layout. We'll build boxes to hold the batteries and a box to hold the power pod. We'll construct a, a strong bulkhead to hold the servo and connect the rudder up to the servo. We're going to do some wiring here and some soldering to connect the motors up to the ele electronic speed control. We're going to lube up the three shaft tubes and at the end of the video we'll have the whole boat running. We got a lot of work ahead of us here. Thanks for watching. I'll quickly remove the deck house and hatch and the deck. I'll remove the two motors, the two couplings, the shafts, and the rudder. I've cut two wedges like this. I marked them on the outside because it's just easier to get at and I'll use these on the inside to strengthen up the tubes. On the exterior we're just going to epoxy around these three areas here and finish it off. So there's the exterior shaft tubes epoxy. On the interior I'm just going to use these two wedges and place them under the tubes and epoxy them into place. And here are the shaft tubes beefed up here and here. On the exterior I protected the bearings from dust with a bit of masking tape. I smoothed everything off fairly, uh, fairly aerodynamically. Uh, it looks okay. On the inside I put masking tape over top of the bearings and the loopholes and I've just cleaned it up so that a rag when wiping the boat won't snag on anything. I get a lot of enjoyment looking at my models when I'm not working on them. <laughs> so I can't resist touching up these red spots. In part four of the build, I used these straight shaft couplers to align the tubes. Under that coupler, I had the two shafts almost touching one another here. Now I want to install the universal coupling. Using a black marker, I'm going to darken up the top side of the shaft here. Now using a sharp point, I'm going to make a mark on top of the motor shaft. Now I'll take the two motors off the motor mount and carefully file a flat groove. I filed a slight square platform here for my screw. I've got the universal mounted onto the motor shaft. And the reason that I have replaced the three millimeter set screws with three millimeter machine bolts is because they're a lot more reliable when you try to tighten things down. And I just hate it when I strip the little hex inside of a tiny set screw and it won't go in and it won't go out. This gets around that problem. So at the other end of the universal, I've got my shaft now lightly fixed into position here. So we have to now look outside uh, the boat to the lower end because we're going to have to measure how much of this shaft we have to cut off in order to groove it. So on the uh, port side I have to cut 0.306 thou off that shaft. And on the starboard side, I have to cut off 0.378 thou. 
Back on the inside, using a marker, I've made a black spot in the approximate area of the cutoff. Now holding these verniers, I'll get the shaft to the correct length and just make a mark using the tip on the vernier. I should be able to cut that shaft off fairly accurately. So now I'll mark the tips of the two shafts with ink. And now I'm going to push the shafts into the universals, making sure that the shaft dog is up against the bearing on the lower end. Using a sharp point again, I'll make a mark. The two flats filed into the shafts. So that's good. We've got a nice tight fit. I'll snug these machine screws down with pliers before I actually run the boat. Next I'm going to use some oil resistant transmission hose with a 5 sixteenths ID. And I'm going to use this as a loophole cover. There we go. And then I'll slip on the shaft collar. The collar is just meant as a little bit of extra safety in case we have something go loose at the motor and on the universal. The, the collar will prevent the shaft from drifting out through the bottom end of the tube. So there we go. Another step on the all-weather boat finished. Now I'd like to do a review of the basic layout inside the boat for our electronic gear. I'm holding up two batteries. The top one is 7.2 volts NIMH and the bottom one is 8.4 volts NIMH. The bottom one is about one inch longer because it has an extra 1.2 volt cell on the end of it. I'll be laying my batteries out on the starboard and port sides. And they would fit inside a wooden bed uh, or you could also Velcro them, but I prefer to do a wooden, some kind of a, a firm structure to hold the batteries. And I will be able to secure the batteries so that they don't fall out of the bed if the boat rolls over. But I will make sure that the bed is long enough to accommodate the longer battery. Next, we're going to have to construct a box that will hold this power pod. These power pods, I have three of them on the go, can be uh, put into any of the boats and one motor or two motors could be run. So I could run 10 different boats one at a time with this one number three unit. This will be located roughly in that position. So we have another little wooden structure to, to do. And then Further aft, we have to mount a servo. This servo has a little aluminum bracket here, and the bracket has to be secured to some kind of solid piece of wood or fiberglass, something that's good and firm. So these are three basic uh, structures that have to be made. So let's start with the battery boxes. Using 1 8 inch basswood, I've cut some strips that are uh, about 17 millimeters wide. I like to use these steel layout blocks to make it a lot easier. Just put a little bit of, a little bit of super glue. Without getting it stuck to my table. <laughs> The battery is just a loose fit inside this uh, battery bed. I'll just cut out the bottom. I'll leave about a half an inch 
at each end for drainage. So here are the two identical battery boxes, two different size batteries. I drilled two 3 16 holes in one end and looped through elastic bands. The other end has two 3 16 holes with 3 16 dowel. I've made a cutout so the wire doesn't have any uh, wear on it. The large battery fits in like this. And these little loops I just put across the battery like that. And pretty secure. So I'll install these in the boat now. The control box footprint fits nicely inside three inches by two and a half inches. So I'll cut this base of the box out now. I've already cut some 17 millimeter wide strips out of the 1 8 basswood so I'll use them to make the border. So here's the control box base super glued together. So I drilled four 5 16 holes in it and four 1 quarter inch holes here. So it won't matter which way I turn this. This looks like a good spot right here. I think I'll fix the, uh, the base directly onto the hull and make the forward end somewhat level. And I can position the, uh, the pod so that my antenna runs up th through this cross deck. So on the pod box, I've drilled two 3 16 holes, put elastics through them, and have 3 16 dowels. So now I will epoxy this into place. I've clamped two pieces of straight wood across the servo arms that hold everything approximately square. And then I cut separate pieces of wood and just super glued them to get the right slope down below in the hull. Two vertical pieces on the right and the left. And I've marked the height of the servo mount here and here. So I'll take this piece of wood off now and I'll be able to cut a solid piece of wood based on this little jig. So I'll cut a few more pieces like this. So I've laminated three pieces of 1 8 thick basswood together here. Gives me a total thickness of over 3 8 of an inch. Bolted the servo bracket onto my wooden bulkhead here with uh, three millimeter bolts and lock nuts. It's a fairly accurate uh, fit conforms somewhat to the slope of the hull. So uh, I'll go ahead and epoxy this into pos position now. So here are the two straight pieces that are clamped onto the tops of the servo arms. There's my bulkhead. I've temporarily connected power pod number three with the servo. I'm just making sure when it's in the neutral position. 
I think I'll go with that. So I'll screw this down tight into uh, so it seats properly. I've epoxied on just a standard arm that comes basically free with these inexpensive servos. I've replaced a four millimeter set screw with a four millimeter machine bolt that will also help me tighten things down. So now I've marked with ink the rudder shaft here and I'm ready to mark the holes and then file a groove. Here are the two flats that I've filed on the rudder shaft. So I've got a really solid connection here now. I'm not sure where the weak spot in the chain is. Likely the plastic servo arm would be the first thing to break. It's hard to tell. In the past, it's often been a slipping uh, set screw that causes any problems. But using these machine bolts, I've been able to tighten everything down with a pair of pliers. So that's an awful lot tighter than anything you could do with a tiny little hex wrench like this. So now let's put the rod through. So here's everything tightened down. We got our two batteries installed, we got the control pod installed, everything's hooked up. But I believe that this is a very, very tight assembly here. And I shouldn't have any problems. And let's have a look at the rollover. Nothing. No movement. Everything is solid. This boat is going to survive any rollover if I can keep the water out of the hull. So let's get these motors connected. To wire up the motors, we're going to have to make up two sets of uh, connection wires here. Standard uh, hardware store fittings. They fit in like this. And the motors have two little, two little blades for these connectors here. I use uh, heat shrink connectors to get a sol soldering joint on the wire. After you cut them to the correct length, strip the ends off the wire. About a half an inch. Then hold the connectors and pull off the little plastic uh, sleeve on it so we've got bare metal here. I'm using these heat shrink solder connections available from the hardware store. I'm just cutting one end off just about a eighth of an inch past the solder ring. So I've got this heat gun on the low setting. The plastic shrinks first. And there's the solder. So here's our four leads here all soldered together. I've connected the motor leads to the backs of the motors. Each motor has a red dot 
on one side next to a terminal. I've connected the red wire to the red dot terminal on each motor and the black to the other one. I've run the, the four wires through the central hole in the motor mount and put some masking tape around them to hold them together. On the port side motor here, this is the motor that has a right hand thread and turns left to go forward. I've marked the elect electronic speed control single motor and double motor. I'm taking the left motor and I am connecting black to black and red to red. And then on the starboard motor, I'll do the same thing. Red to red, black to black. So now the motors are connected to the ele electronic speed control. So now I'm going to lube up the shaft tubes to make sure that I'm not, not playing with my boat here on the bench with dry bearings. So now I'm going to fill the shaft tubes up with grease. I have grease coming out the top bearing, so I can assume that there's plenty of grease in this starboard shaft tube. So now all three shaft tubes are full of marine grease. On the uh, rudder shaft tube, I've got the little uh, transmission hose here and I've just cut it so I can slip that over the hole. The electronic speed control has one Tamiya fitting for one battery. I'm turning my transmitter on and switching the boat on here. Reverse, forward. But take note of this. They're both running in the same direction. So now I'll switch off the boat. I'm going to move around. And reverse the terminals on the starboard engine. Now let's turn the boat on again. Fine tune it a bit here. forward reverse so here we are in the complete rollover position lots of power It'll be interesting to find out if the transmitter and receiver still work when the boat's in the up, upside down position like this in the water. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of part five of the all weather ship build. Just a few more steps and we'll have this ship in the water. Please don't miss part six. Subscribe today. Thanks for watching.